Angels are saying God is about to surprise you with unexplainable blessings. You have been in this place long enough. The Holy Spirit is moving you to a new level. Your breakthrough is happening. Every assignment of the enemy has been canceled. God will restore everything that was stolen. You will recover. You will bounce back. Better days are coming. Blessings are coming your way. What's about to happen next will cause you to rejoice. Everything is going to work out in your life. Your health, finances, relationships, love, and family are in God's hands. He is making a way for you right now. God is up to something incredible. God is going to do something amazing in your life this month. I don't know what you've been praying about or what has had your pillows soaked with tears, but I am here today to tell you that God has heard your prayers. His angels have been dispatched, and you will see your miracles soon. I declare you will see your health turn around for the good. You will surprise the doctors. You will get the job. Your job is to act and speak like it's going to happen. Walk by faith, not by sight. God is shifting things for you and your family. Don't spend another night worrying about the who, what, when, and how. That's God's job, not yours. He works the midnight shift and angels have been assigned to your case. Get some rest while this plays out. I know you have a lot on your mind right now. It feels like the weight of the world is on your shoulders. You feel alone. Lay all your concerns before me in prayer. I will provide. I will make a way for you. Don't worry. I have your back. It's time to get excited again. It's time to remember you are not in this thing alone. I'm working on your challenges. I have already assigned my angels to you. So let go of the stress and trust me. I have an incredible ending in store for you. In fact, that's why you need to get excited again. Because the happy ending I've got coming your way is going to rock your world. I declare that this is your week of miracles. Miracles on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. What they said could not happen for you will happen. God will make a way for you. If you're looking for reassurance today, this is it. You're going to be okay. Blessings are coming your way. God is so proud of you for staying strong. Everything will be all right. Sometimes the fears in your life can be loud, manding your attention. But you can trust that God is with you and for you and is more powerful than whatever you're afraid of. When the Apostle Paul was in a frightening situation, he chose to trust God instead of giving in to his fear. When he did, here's what he found to be true about God. He did rescue us from mortal danger, and he will rescue us again. We have placed our confidence in him, and he will continue to rescue us. 2 Corinthians 1.10 You have a choice just like Paul did. Choose to believe God is watching over you. Choose to trust Him, and choose not to give in to your fears. God promises believers that no matter what happens to us, He is working for our good if we love Him and follow Him. Now we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. Romans 8.28 If you're a believer, God promises all things are working together for good not that all things are good, but that they are working together for good. That means you can stop listening to your fears because there is no difficulty, dilemma, defeat, or disaster in the life of a believer that God can't ultimately get some good out of. There is no need to fear the future. Your fears reveal where you do not trust God. So, today, make a list of your fears and ask God to help you identify the reason you have the. Then ask Him to help you replace your fears with trust. The Jesus that I want would probably serve me and my own interests, 
and align with my theological leanings and plans and dreams. The Jesus that I need would serve the people that I forgot existed, who lived outside my best laid plans and doctrinal camps, and he would just as quickly subvert my interests to care about others' interests above my own. The Jesus that I want would probably listen to my music, look like my race, match my Myers-Briggs, and fight for my ideology. The Jesus that I need would knock me over with exuberant music I never heard, enter my culture without condescending or conforming, would accept and challenge who I am, and transcend the very petty human idea of an ideology. The Jesus that I want would probably die for people who liked me, or were like me, or were most likely. The Jesus that I need died for the people who were nothing like him, and he loved them, and even liked them, and he rose to find them. He even rose to find you and me, the least likely, because he's the love we want and need. There are days or weeks or even months when I read the Bible and there are no grand epiphanies. There are whole seasons of Sundays when I sing praise and feel nothing. There are times of prayer where the silence kills me. There are too many times when I doubt the very existence of God and the sending of His Son. It can all feel like a crazy lie. It's in those times that I ask myself, Am I out of love with God somehow? Am I losing my faith here? How do I get back to where I used to be? But I keep reading my Bible. I keep singing on Sundays. I keep praying. I soak in books and sermons. I serve. I enjoy the company of mature Christians. I enjoy the fellowship of the broken. And you know sometimes the clouds part and God comes through and his love squeezes my heart and I fall to my knees remembering how good he is. Then I read scripture and can't stop weeping and I turn on Christian songs in my car full blast and sing loud enough to scare the traffic. I serve with shaking hands and get convicted by those sermons and soak in God's goodness all over again. So I've learned over time. I wasn't really out of love with God. I'm just a fragile human being who changes as much as the weather. I was setting a ridiculous standard for myself that can't be defined by self-pressuring parameters. I was tricked by the enemy into judging my flesh. How I feel is important, but it's not the whole basis of my faith. It's wholly solely, definitely by His grace and in that, I think, can finally relax. Oftentimes, God will use our experiences in life as stepping stones to prepare us for what He has in store next. Scripture tells us that He'll even take the things the enemy tries to bring against us and turn them around and use them for our good. He is always leading us on a journey of preparation. That's why it's so important to keep our eyes focused on Him. We have to trust that when we are submitted to Him, even if we don't understand, He is ordering our steps. If something is not happening on your timetable, remind yourself, God knows what He is doing. He has my best interest at heart. God is preparing me. While you're waiting, don't make the mistake of trying to figure everything out. If you're constantly trying to figure things out, that will only frustrate you. Turn it over to God. Declare, God, my times are in your hands. I'm not going to worry because I trust that you are leading me on a journey of preparation for all the wonderful blessings you have in store for me. Remember, the Holy Spirit is imparted to you when you place your trust in Christ. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is to give you daily guidance and counsel to help you walk in the ways of the Lord and to make wise choices. Ask for the help of the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. Ask Him to guard you from evil and to guide you into righteousness. Give Him charge over your schedule, your daily appointments, and the emotions that you feel. Trust Him to help you pursue emotional health and strength 
bringing your emotional life into harmony with your spiritual life, a whole life founded on Jesus Christ. We find peace within God's dear Lord, provision, and we trust in the Lord when we understand how much He loves us. Many of us have been hurt and damaged over and over again to the point we don't know what safety looks like, let alone the safety of love. But God is challenging us to find this safety in Him maybe for the first time ever and be vulnerable enough to trust that His love is the real thing, that this grace is sufficient to cover, protect, provide, and look out for us. It's a love that never lets go, a love that's inescapable, a love that won't leave us hanging or questioning where we stand and pursues us to the ends of the earth. Father God, I have been at the end of my rope until this morning. Our family finances have been in shambles since the car wreck last month. I mean, with the other driver not insured, we had to cut into our savings to cover the repairs, and then my husband had to miss work because of some of the injuries. This then led to higher than expected medical bills and poof, our savings were gone. I have been praying all month for you to come through and provide for us. Yet all I seemed to hear back was a deafening silence. No new money from anywhere, no catching a break at any point. I was losing my trust and faith. Until this morning. Lord, I don't know how it all came to happen, but apparently the insurance company made an error and we were actually due to receive more than what we paid out for repairs. And, the hospital called and said, they were writing off one-third of the bill. Lord, you have answered my prayers and I am so filled with awe and thanksgiving right now that I can barely think straight. You have come through as Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We will now be able to have some savings again and not be so financially strung out. Thank you through Jesus Christ. Amen. God, whatever I do, please help me to do it for your glory. When I'm talking to other people, let it be for your glory. When I'm working, let it be for your glory. When I'm spending time with family and friends, let it be for your glory. In all that I say and do, let me do it for you. In Jesus' name, amen. You were not made to believe in yourself because you were not made to be in control. You were made to believe in someone else. You were made to trust someone else to be in control. That is ultimately what faith is, trusting in the one who sits on the throne as king. There is wonderful freedom in living this way. It takes all the pressure off of you and places it on the one who can handle it. A great thing about believing in God and trusting Him with your life is that He does not struggle with the same things you and I do. He never gets stressed, anxious, or worried. He is in control of all things, has a plan and purpose, and is strong enough to see it through. We will fail. He never does. We will make mistakes. He never does. We will make a mess of things. He never does. We will make mistakes. He never does. He can be trusted. Time and time again, He has proven Himself. But to believe in Him means we have to let go. Letting go means we can no longer hold on to it. Whatever that it is for you, it's time to place it in the hands of God and let go of it. Close doors. Be thankful for them. On the other side of closed doors exist heartaches, attached strings that would have bound you, skeletons, stress, and sleepless nights. You think I'm wrong because maybe you watch from afar and see someone thriving after walking through the door that you were denied, or that's what you think you see. If you love God, attempt to walk in His ways, and believe Romans 8.28 in theory, but practically you doubt that he is working all things for your good. Just wait. I'm a nobody in the grand scheme of things, 
but I have spent almost 50 years watching God close and open doors in my life. I've lived long enough to see everything that was once considered a disappointment, the relationships that didn't work out, friendships that fizzled over time, the applications and resumes that didn't warrant a callback, the interviews that didn't land a job, turn out in my favor. And through that I know I can count on my God to look out for me the rest of the way, and if I'll view any negative through the lens of faith, I can be content in His will, in the no answer, in the closed door. I praise you for preparing the way and setting things in motion for me to walk in your plan for my life. You have given me land to possess that was given to my ancestors long ago. You've given me territory to walk in and take by force from the enemy who seeks to devour it. You've given me a tribe of believers to surround me and strengthen me for the journey. I claim your power to overcome and proclaim you as Lord. Give me opportunities and open doors to set your plans in motion. I will be strong and courageous for the Lord is on my side. Thank you for giving over to me what the enemy has tried to steal. I will not allow failure, fear, or setbacks to keep me from accomplishing your great work. Thank you for the hedge of protection you place over me and my descendants. Thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. You are our shield and our banner. We exalt no other God but you. Give us this day our portion so that we may be a blessing to someone else. Help me to be generous, kind, and loving to everyone. Help me to see the greater good in all and be a light for you. Thank you for your goodness and mercy to me, a sinner. Forgive me, Father, when I sin against you and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. You and you alone are the only one who forgives sin. I am made whole in you and I am a new creation. Praise your holy name. Amen, a new day to praise you and bring my requests to you as I wait expectantly for you to answer. You know my heart's desires and things I carry in secret. You know my mind is prone to wonder, but my heart yearns to know you more. You know when I shrink back into the shadows and when my heart is overflowing with joy. I lay it all down this morning, every care, every concern, every weight that holds me back from knowing you in your sovereignty. I know that you are able and that your desire for me is an abundant life. I proclaim that I will live a life of abundance and that you will meet me at my point of need. My heart will not fail to praise the one who made the heavens and the earth because your holiness reigns upon the deep and nothing is too hard for you. Refresh my soul this morning as your mercies are new every morning. Restore my strength for the battles and the weapons that the enemy uses to detour me. Prepare me with a cloak of righteousness to face the enemy head on and declare the salvation of the Lord. We are more than conquerors through you, and we will not fear for you are with us. So today, Lord, I place my trust in you alone, and I lay at your feet. I will not pick it back up because this weight was never meant for me to carry. I rest secure in knowing that it is well. Thank you for another day to show this world that you love them. By the way I reflect you in this dark world that is searching for light, may I shine so bright that they will be drawn to way in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear Lord, Your word says you will carry out everything that concerns us. Nothing can stop or thwart your plans or stop what you have ordained. Sometimes we grow discouraged because our seasons of difficulty seem to have no end in sight. We feel like life is just passing us by, and we are just treating water trying to stay afloat instead of living an abundant life of faith. Help us to remember that unlike us, you don't look for easy answers or quick fixes. You are more concerned with the bigger picture and long-term results that come from our difficult seasons instead of our short-term comfort. 
you have given us examples all throughout your word where you fulfilled your promises and prophecies, but there were often many years, sometimes centuries, before you brought what you had promised to pass. Sometimes our lives are like putting together a puzzle. There must be certain pieces put in place before others can come together. Please forgive the times when we are impatient and when we question your plans, tactics, and timing. May we grow to trust you and live with an attitude of gratitude. Help us not to have a complaining spirit of discontent. You promise to give wisdom to all who ask. Please give us the wisdom to know what we should fight to change and what we should accept. Help us to be discerning so we know when we should leave things in your hands and when we need to step out in faith. You promise to direct our paths and to lead and guide us. Please work in us. Please bring calm where there is turmoil. Please speak peace where there is anxiety, worry, and fear. Please give comfort to all who are hurting. You tell us to ask, seek, and knock, and we're doing that now. But at this moment, when we are still before you, we acknowledge more than anything. We just need you. There is nothing we will ever need more than you. Thank you for all you've done for us and all that is to come. We thank you in advance for meeting each need, spoken and unspoken, and we thank you that we can ask these things in the name of Jesus, you for seeing us through this week. Thank you for your grace that sustains U.S. Ohm days, weeks, and seasons are more difficult than others. When faced with daunting circumstances, we wonder how we are going to get through what we are facing, and the next thing we know, we look up and realize we survived. We don't know how, but we did. At this moment, we acknowledge it is by your grace that we are where we are. You are the one who fulfills every promise to uphold us and to sustain us. You are sufficiency. We often forget that Jesus is living inside of us and he gives us all the power, wisdom, insight, knowledge, strength, energy, stamina, and resources we need to. We may feel inadequate, but Jesus never is. His strength is made perfect in our weakness, and when we are weak, he is strong within us. Some things are a mystery to us. Some things we won't fully understand this side of heaven. Help us to claim your promises and live in expectancy of seeing you work in our lives to fulfill them. Help us to live our lives with bold faith, confidence in your abilities, and with the assurance that what we lack, you do not. Help us to trust that you are more than capable of taking what little we have to offer and turning it into more than enough for whatever we lack or face. We can look back on our lives and see how many hours we have needlessly wasted worrying, be anxious and fearful. We can look back and see how many times we have said, I can't, instead of making our first response, I can't but you can. May the time we have left on this earth be filled with more trust in you than we have had. May we be filled with a deeper faith that is more reliant and surrendered to you and your will. May we have absolute confidence that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Help us to remember that the Lion of the tribe of Judah is inside of us. Help us to live like we believe that the same power that resurrected Jesus from the grave is inside of us. When we feel weak and weary and drained from our burdens and cares, help us to remember our Savior is standing beside us, offering to be our burden bearer. It is not our abilities, but yours, that matter. Help us to surrender any negative or defeatist attitudes that we might harbor. Help us to confidently believe your truth, live with hope in our hearts. Help us to live like the victorious warriors that we are through you. 
Help us to rise up each day with the confidence, boldness, and comfort we would surely have if we could see in this earthly realm the angels who surround us, Savior who is with us. Thank you for all you do and for all you are. We are grateful, Jesus' name we pray. Amen as we join together today. We lift up to you all who need miracles. We know that you see what we don't. You know what we don't. Like your children standing at the Red Sea, we know many are surrounded by troubles, and it seems there is no way of escape. Many feel hopeless, trapped, and discouraged. They don't see a way around or through their circumstances. Lord, we know you have a good plan for each of us, and you have not brought us this far to fail us now. Some have multiple needs, and you know the who, what, where, and why of each situation. You have promised to provide. We look to you and bow before you with faith, larger than a mustard seed. We know what you can do and what you are capable of. We are asking you to move mountains, change hearts, make blind eyes see, bring deliverance, open doors, and make a way where there seems to be no way. Our hope and trust are in you. Our faith is in you, the God of the impossible and miraculous. We intercede for those who are physically and emotionally exhausted from their battles, for all who are overwhelmed with all that is in front of them, for all who are afraid, for all who feel desperate and despondent. We are joining together and asking with one voice to see your goodness in the land of the living. Please make a way for those who are in perilous, life-threatening situations, for those who need a way of escape from abusive situations, for those who are dealing with dangerous acts of nature, for those who are dealing with the devastating aftermath of tragedies and losses, for those who are caught in spiritual battles with enemies they can't see, be their waymaker, chain breaker, healer, and deliverer. May our hearts be right before you so that nothing hinders our prayers. We ask without doubting and believe that you are the same God of miracles that you have always been. We look to you this day, and we thank you in advance for all you will do. We give you praise and glory for all you have done and all that you are. We submit to you and surrender our wills and ask that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Gracious Lord, please hear our prayers as we intercede for all in need. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. When God says be still, he means be still internally. He wants you to keep pushing forward patiently and with a calm spirit, knowing that He is working everything out for your good. It's difficult to shift the way we think, especially when our habits of worrying are deeply rooted, but we'll never truly grow or experience the fullness of our encounters with God until we let go of the anxious need to know and control everything. I declare that God is taking you to a new level in life. Your sadness will be replaced with happiness. Your struggles will turn into blessings. Your loss will be replaced with a miracle bigger than you can imagine. You will fully receive the peace God has for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Change is coming. I will open doors no man can shut. This is a season where I am bringing you to your destiny. I understand what you are going through and I promise to be with you in every trial of life. Remember, your destiny is not determined by the economy or how you were raised or your education. Your destiny is determined by me, your Heavenly Father. This week, God is going to show you just how much He has your back. You are going to see a turnaround in your health, employment, business, relationships, and finances. God is going to do amazing things in your life this week. Get ready. 
This will be the week of congratulations. You are approved. I just got the best news ever. Finally, it's happening. God is going to do some amazing things in your life this week. Claim it and receive it by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Get ready for your plot twist. You will go from struggle to success, failure to favor, and insecurity to increase. There is nothing too hard for God. This is your appointed time for God's favor. Claim it and receive it by faith. God has a stimulus package for you. If you put God first, He will put you first. Matthew 6.33 It is going to cost you everything to the do the things that God has called you to do. If you can bear the weight of your cross, He will bear the weight of your crown. Luke 9.23 Trust Him with your destiny. He has something divine in store for you that is beyond all that you can imagine or think. I will fulfill all the promises I made to you. The things I have spoken to you are coming. I am freeing you from the chains that have held you back. Stay close to me and watch me move in the midst of your storm. My dear little warrior, I know the road ahead. All problems are solved and the path is clear. Rest, my child. Enjoy the blessings and peace I've prepared for you today. When time is right, I will walk you through the way. For now, you can just trust me and stop hurting your little heart with worries. I control the situation and I will never allow plans of the crooked to prosper. I love you. I am going to take you from obscurity to notoriety. You've worked hard. You've been faithful. You've honored me. Now get ready. The curtain is about to come up. I am about to show people who you really are. You are coming into a new level of prominence, a new level of influence, and a new level of income. I am going to endorse you. People are going to see the greatness I put in you. Great blessings are about to materialize in your life because you have believed for so long. You never gave up. You remained faithful. Your dedication, passion, and patience is about to pay off in a major way. Everything is about to finally make sense. I have a good feeling about the rest of this year. It doesn't matter how it started or where you're currently at. Things are about to turn around for you in a major way. You're about to prosper, flourish, and receive your greatest blessings. Be ready for it. It's all happening. Never forget, I am always with you, in good times and in bad times, on mountaintops and in valleys, in joy and in tears, in blessings and in trials. Whatever you are going through, I am right there beside you, every day, every night, every step of the way. I love you and I won't leave you. Trust me to take care of you and be faithful to you in every season that you walk through. God's not done with you yet. Your latter days shall be better than your former. Where you are now is only the beginning. God is about to launch you into the next dimension. Don't let your present circumstances discourage you because where you start will not be where you finish. The greatness that you've experienced on this level is only a small glimpse into the greatness to come. Get ready for your latter days. Keep moving forward. It will only get better. And though you started with little, you will end with much. Subscribe our YouTube channel to reach 30,000 soon before April. Donate us super thanks. Type Amen to affirm. Thanks for watching.